again. So the tomb came up too early, and then the pediment came up too early, and this bit where we get the focus on the yeah, Christ on in the, the middle. Christ, yeah. So being invited to come and participate in this project was really interesting because it's taking uh, a, a building that's full of memories, decaying memories, um, and actually looking at how you bring those memories to life again and how you add a new interpretation. It's as if this building is our text and you, we've, we've read that text, we've experienced this building and then it's about doing the research and having the conversations with the rest of the creative minds working on the project. We all had very different responses to these statues. So I, growing up as an atheist Jew, seeing these very religious statues, uh, I had one response. And Hank, who grew up in, in the church, felt like, oh, this is the promise of redemption. And Sarah, who grew up in the church but not as positively, felt like this is the promise of judgment. We took the original ideas, uh, this idea of the power of the church and of the authority of the church, uh, and how that's expressed through things like statues and through architecture, uh, but also the human level and hopefully take uh, people visiting this space over the eight minute cycle on a journey. So we also introduced uh, an individual identity for each room um, and, and picked up on certain uh, essences that we could then build on using light and sound and video. Starting with this room, uh, this room was very much about fragments um, of decorative work. So there's very little figurative work in this room. It's mainly decorative, apart from just one or two figures. Um, it really spoke of the idea of beauty for beauty's sake. So we picked up on that. You then maybe bring through here, and when you arrive at this room, this is where you're judged. Uh, what we noticed about this room is that all of the figures along the wall here um, if you sit on the seat in front of you, they're all gazing towards you. So we like the idea that the judgment can be a judgment either way, um, and that it's not necessarily a judgment that's in one direction. In room four, when it gets very loud and clubby, we were inspired by the sort of dramatic gestures and the beautifully cut clothes. And so we thought, you know, what, it kind of looks like a nightclub if you light it right. So this room, uh, especially as we moved through it from the previous room, had uh, a very different scale from the rooms that we had just experienced. So a much more human scale. Uh, there's also a femininity to this room that you don't really experience in other rooms, sort of a delicacy. We took this idea of the power of the church and of the authority of the church uh, and how that's expressed uh, from the top of the room down to the bottom of the room, down to the individual human beings that make up a, a society and a culture. Tady vlastně hlavní je především tady ty zbytky tý krocinové kašny, takže z tý jsme vycházeli, že ta kašna je vlastně z doby Rudolfa II. a to byla doba alchemistů, takovou alchemickou dílnu, trochu jsme se z toho pokusili udělat, kde je vlastně na stropě je video, kde vlastně vznikají nějaký makrosvěty a mikrosvěty. In the UK we work in a slightly different way. We look at every designer whether they're designing set, costume, lighting, sound, video, we look at them all as being individual sonographers. They all have an individual part to play in the overall design of the work. So we really refer to them all as sonographers. Whereas the difference that we found here in Czech Republic is that the sonographer tends to be the vision, visionary designer. That person uh, really kind of designs the, the entire um, environment from the set through to lighting and costume but they're not necessarily designing them in the specific way that we would design in the UK and the US in terms of the very, very detailed area. It's more of a vision. It's more of an overall vision and atmosphere that they're looking for. 
It's then down to the individual lighting and sound technicians to realise that vision for them. So there's a really interesting um, relationship between the sonographer and the lighting technician that enables the lighting technician to fulfil the sonographer's idea. Light teaches and communicates to an audience how performance works. We're all very used to the idea, certainly in, in Western culture, that we go into the theatre with a lit auditorium and that the auditorium is darkened at the beginning of performance. It sends a very simple message to an audience, which is the show is about to start and you need to pay attention now. Uh, and so light goes on directing an audience, if you like, and, and guiding an audience through a performance. Uh, you can light an actor that implies that their attention and their, their focus is, is somewhere. Are they, is their mind and their imagination as a character out of the space or in the room with the other characters or what's going on in their mind? Manipulation of emotions and mood and I think just the most subtle shifts can change very drastically how something feels and how your audience feels experiencing something. Because audiences tend not worry about light. Light's changing around us all of the time, but, but we tend not to pay attention to it. So light's really powerful because it, it can work subliminally, get below the audience's radar. One of the fundamental things I figured out actually when I was teaching at Princeton, uh, I was sitting with my students and we were trying to define what the, the message of the medium of sound is of recorded sound. Um, this is all in reference that Marshall McLuhan had written this sort of notion that every medium has an inherent message. It's not the content of the medium, right? It's not the content of my sound design, but rather the actual reality of a sound being introduced into a space where it doesn't naturally exist. Relocation of one thing to another place. We summon into existence uh, another environment that, that isn't here or when I create uh, a moment in history or an emotional moment or a, a natural moment, any of those things, they don't exist in reality. I'm just summoning them into the room through moving waves. What became really apparent here is the, all of these objects were removed from their original context and we got excited about the question of what happens when we recontextualize them again. Another important part of that was the, the workshop um, aspect of the project as well. Again. The, uh, having a group of 30 students, all again from different parts of the world. So again, culturally very, very different. I think it was a good decision to switch them on quickly. Yeah. Uh, so not only it's been really interesting to see how they exchange their own learning and practices, but for us to see how we are teaching as well as pedagogues, how we actually teach in different ways and learning some of those different practices. Um, so it's actually been a two-way learning process between us as the designers and professionals and the students that we've been working with. Let's listen to it again, because it's something weird. Oh, it's mixed in there? It's that right there, right? So that's in the, that is in the original track. It's also it's sort of divine. Right, so like from yeah. Either of us, any of this, any of, I don't think either of us any ever used this uh, sort of this kind of base color no. from the fixtures, and I think it's yeah. actually kind of pretty. And that'll that just makes that transition. But because this room. Yeah. I wonder if it was like ba 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 ba. You know, if I took it to halftime, it would have some. Uh, it would sound less like a mistake. Instead of looking like icy shards.